Hi, I'm Dave Moyer. And I'm Paul Aiken. Welcome back. We're so glad that you're back with us for this second very, very important video that we're going to be going over. Now, there's two more that follow this on each of the next two days, so you don't want to miss any of these. But today, Paul, we're going to talk about flying. Love to fly, Dave. Paul, let's start with this. Right out of the gate, we'd like to show you a couple examples, a couple of videos, and they're about flying. The first will be what we consider to be so-so, and the other will be something that's a lot more exceptional. Well, you know, Dave, I think the real, uh, the real thing about these videos and you're about to see is what, both of these videos are focused on real estate. And the, other, the first video is really the first video that I did with real estate. And the thing is with these videos, it's just like you guys out there, is that you're starting out and a lot of guys are kind of afraid to get into video. They're great at taking stills. They can move from shot to shot, frame up their shot perfectly and take it but it's very difficult for them to dynamically move the camera around a subject and keep it in frame. So this first video, you'll see a lot of yaw movement and whatnot, and it's probably like, like a lot of the videos you guys see out there or that you take yourself. But the good news is if I can make this progress into this next video, which you're about to see, then you can too. So David, you're really gonna see a, a progression here of the quality of the videos. Notice in this clip the lines from the video. That's what happens when you don't have a lens hood on uh, your GoPro. But also notice the constant back and forth yaw just because I couldn't get a smooth dynamic shot across the front. And this is what a lot of first time operators footage looks like. Now notice in this shot we're actually segueing scenes from the western town on this ranch to the wildlife and the farm. But we do it through the fence. Now with this shot, we're really trying to showcase the pool, the aura, the environment of the house, but we also want to reveal the area of this house to give people an idea of the location. But notice as we elevate over the roof, look at the beautiful courtyard. We have to incorporate that into the shot and then finish the shot with a final establishing reveal so people have an understanding of where they are. But notice the flag. The flag was blowing pretty significantly, which makes this shot even more difficult. Folks, as you can see from the videos Paul's just been talking about, everybody can improve. You can improve, Paul can improve. Paul, give us an example of something that you wish you knew way back in your early days that you know now. Um, how about a few examples? Like when I was flying real estate, I wish I knew that you could take the spring out of your remote control. So when you're pulling a turn, you could elevate and hold the elevation because when you are pulling a turn, you're also decreasing the amount of thrust on the craft so you start to sink when you start turning so if you just have um, if you take the spring out of your elevation stick and you can just leave the elevation right at like 10 percent above 50 or 20 percent above 50 then that way whenever you do these hard banking turns or you know even a reveal and whatnot you maintain altitude and it's just one of those simple things that you know if you're flying and you want to have this shot where you're coming up to reveal the house and then you fly over it, you see a lot of people kind of like step up. Like honestly, yep, they, they yep. you know, they're not yep. heavy on the sticks. Um, but another thing that I wish I knew is when you're trying to shoot around something, so you're orbiting around it, I wish I knew that your hands have to move proportionally on the sticks in order to get a smooth shot, meaning you have to roll the exact same amount that you have to yaw, but in the opposite direction. You know, how many of you knew that? Guess what? That's what our drone community is all about. These are people talking about real world solutions, ideas, techniques, things that you can use. Okay, Paul, that's for a beginner. Let's talk about somebody who's a little more advanced. What kinds of things, what kind of mistakes do even people who've been flying for six months or a year, what kind of mistakes are they making? Man, when it comes to flying, there's so many things. Even myself, this just this last weekend, I put the wrong pitch prop on my craft and I was coming in to a big to do a big reverse reveal and I put a 9443 prop instead of a 9450 which is the only difference is the pitch aggression mm -hmm. and well that small difference made me literally fall right out of the sky and that I've been flying for years <laughs> so yeah there are little things like that other things that I see happening all the time um, you know guys they forget about compass calibrations advanced IMU cals and whatnot that you have to do when you change time zones to film or especially if you go to other countries to film. So there are so many examples uh, that I can think of at the moment. 
even I see a lot of guys who take off on uh, parking garages or mm -hmm. on their car and they have no idea that there's literally a magnetic field around their car. So, uh, you know, when they take off, they're not getting an accurate GPS signal. But here's my favorite, Dave. And I even saw this on a Kickstarter video just the other day. They were showcasing their drone and it was taking off and it didn't uh, create the home lock. And you know when it creates the home lock because it strobes green very quickly. Mm -hmm. And there's strobed green 50 feet in the air. Well, if their battery went out on their remote or they lost their home signal for whatever reason, something happened with the GPS because they were flying near steel or power lines, the drone would have come over and instead of landing, it would have cut its motors at 50 feet. So it would just drop from 50 feet. And this is a mistake I see people do all the time. They don't wait for the home lock. They just, oh, oh, we're good to go, and here we go. And their home lock is now 50 feet above them, so their motor's cut out at 50 feet. Our drone community is all about the knowledge and experience, tricks, tips, warnings, advice, all the things necessary to not get stuck with exactly the situation that Paul just described. Paul, how has the community helped you? Have you ever picked up some tips from our community members? So one of the tips that I picked up, um, I didn't understand why I was getting a lot of uh, shadowing in my real estate videos. Okay. And I realized that you can get more contrast in depth when you turn all the outside lights on on the house. Even if it's in the middle of the day, it makes a substantial difference in your footage. And I actually learned that from one of the guys in the community. And now every time when I go film a house, I turn all the outside lights on. You know, one simple little trick and that one tip could be just what it takes to separate you from the other people that are trying to come into this industry and trying to take some business. And you now look like the pro that you aspire to be. That's what the Drone You community is all about. It's helping each of us, all of us, take a step forward. Dave, I think there's an even better way to put this. A lot of guys out there who are flying, even when they do get good, they're just doing these simple straight movements. That's great, but that's not gonna get you work. If you want that competitive advantage, if you want that competitive edge, you have to do these beautiful, sweeping, organic, I like to call them the half moon motions, because they showcase not only the skill, but they also showcase depth in the subject. And you get a much more rewarding shot. It looks so much better. So if you're looking for that competitive advantage, that's just one simple thing in this community. One thing is that we have found is the drone pilots, drone owners, are oftentimes rugged individualists. They're convinced that they can learn how to do this. And you know what? You can. But why do you want to make all the mistakes? Why do you want to struggle through that whole process? Be an individualist, but at the same time, learn from the community. The community has the body of knowledge and experience. They are where you are. They have been where you have been. And it's important to learn all those pieces. So Dave, when I was getting into this, and I'm probably a lot like you, I was so excited. All I wanted to do was just go outside, get up in the air, and see things I'd never seen before. Uh, and you know, that excitement is great, but it can also lead into a world of problems. Uh, and that's why, you know, if you do have that excitement and if you do want to relive that imagination, tone back the excitement just a little bit because the amount of nuances that you need to know in order to be successful are so grand. I mean, the number, Dave, is just astronomical. But the thing is, is that just like you said, if you kind of take a step back and you learn things the right way, not only are you going to save time, you're going to save a lot of money, not only in the insurance costs, but also in the cost for damage of your rig, you know, if you have a crash. But most importantly, what a lot of guys don't know is if you have a crash with that lithium polymer battery and it explodes, there's no putting the fire out right away. It has to be a very specific type of chemical to put that fire out and that could cause a lot of damage. So I'm just like you, super excited, but you don't wanna be that guy that makes the mistake because Dave, you know this, in this industry, you really only get one shot to do it right. And I know that sounds crazy, but you make one error, you get dropped from your insurance, you're done. Many of you right now might be a little bit intimidated. I know I am. I mean, I'm listening to Paul and he's got lots of ideas and he's used lots of advanced language. Well, you know what? This drone community that we're talking about is wide open to everybody from those that are just beginning to all the way through people like Paul that have a very advanced set of skills. And, and really, that's the key to this, is that those of you that are early into this are going to learn from those that are 
those that are flying regularly and having a lot of success. For example, just recently, Drone U sponsored a live training session up in Denver. And we had people that were just taking the drone out of the box for the first time, and we had people that have been flying and making money for a period of time. We'd like to show you some of the video from that live training event that we recently sponsored up in Denver. Paul, there are all kinds of different skill sets out there. Give us an example of some of the different levels of skill that you want to see in pilots. Well, you know, to it really helps showcase the different levels of skill. I think in the earlier pilots, you see a lot of people kind of frantic on their movements, you know, uh, quick and stop, quick and stop. I, they need to understand their orientation. The next level up from that is the guy that does understand their orientation, but they're not really smooth on the sticks. We saw a lot of this up in Denver when we were doing our, our obstacle course, you know, some guys would kind of get ready in the obstacle course and just, you know, kind of wiggle through. And you really have to have the confidence to line up your spot, line up your flight path, envision your flight path. So when you know, they say in golf, you know, be the ball, be the drone, you pick that spot and you go for it. And you have to commit. And a lot of guys just don't commit because they don't have the confidence. But the good news is, is that after flight training with us, you will have that confidence. Well, and that's really the key to this thing is, the more you can talk with other members of the community, the more you can see what they're doing, and the more that you can share what you're doing with others, you're gonna get that kind of input and advice that frankly is close to priceless. And without that, you're just gonna be stuck at the level that you're at right now. And I mean, are you satisfied? Those of you watching today, if you've been flying, are you satisfied with being as good as you can possibly be? Or do you see you have room to grow? Paul, what's it feel like to be a pilot that's kind of gotten stuck? Oh, it's got it's infuriating. Um, I've had problems, um, you know, with more so builds and whatnot. But uh, it is it is extremely infuriating, and you lose your pride. And you know, we even had a guy in the community yesterday who um, wasn't monitoring his battery voltage. You know, again, focusing on percentage, not battery voltage, and. We teach all the time that battery voltage is the only determinant of your battery life, not your battery percentage. And uh, he was flying in an alleyway and his drone went into return to home mode and he didn't reset his settings for return to home. Mm -hmm. So instead of him landing, he actually went higher autonomously. So he had no control and he hit some wires and landed on a roof and he had to go retrieve it. Ugh. So not only do you have to lose your pride, but then you have to go, Hey Dave, I dropped my drone on your roof. Uh, uh, can, can we go up there and get it? It's, it's disgusting in my book. Well, this is a hobby for those who want to leave it as a hobby. But if you're serious about eventually building a career, you, there's so many things you've got to learn, practice, and perfect in order to really be able to maximize your opportunities as being a drone pilot. Now, in the first video, Paul, just to review real quickly, in the first video, we talked a lot about the legal aspects, the FAA, and just really following good basic business practices as a pilot in order to keep yourself from getting into trouble. Today, we've had the chance to talk more about flying and give you some actual examples of good and bad flying. Now, the next step is, if you can fly well, the next step is the big step, which the is video. cinematography and video. And tomorrow's next clip that you can be able to watch is all about cinematography and how to take yourself from being a good pilot being a phenomenal cinematographer. We'll see you tomorrow.